how are you? Welcome to Marriage Talk Season 3, Episode 3. My name is Gladys Kamau. Tell us where you're watching us, are watching us from and uh, how well has your marriage been resting courtesy of Marriage Talk. You can tweet, you can hashtag, it's Marriage Talk UK. Welcome all. Please, would you refresh our minds of what we've been talking about the previous session please oh yes what a wonderful time we have had in the previous two sessions an amazing time of learning an amazing time of talking about the one thing we, be we began from valentine's sunday which was so amazing and did some two other episodes on the last two wednesdays and tonight we are just doing another episode because you know what we got you in this we don't want your marriage to struggle we don't want trouble in marriage and therefore, we never leave the student seats. You know, last time when we were here, these guys enjoyed us because we are the youngest. <laughs> and they said that's the reason why we are using this seat. But tonight again, ladies and gentlemen, we are so privileged to have on stage with us the couples that, you know, uh, uh, came here for the first time dancing their way out. And the couples that surprised us with a serenade, you know. From the extreme right, we have Mr. and Mrs. James Mashuri. We so much appreciate you guys. Welcome back on the on the James Factor. We have <laughs> <laughs> next to them James and Susan Wairia. <laughs> and now we we jump the James Factor and we have with us <laughs> yeah, the P Factor. <laughs> Pastor P and P. Pastor Peter and Pauline Kamau, welcome so much. Thank it's you. so lovely to have you guys. And I'm James Kamau. Yeah, the, the, my name is all over. It's Kamau here and James there. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we are so grateful. And last time, we were looking at the one thing and we, we left it at a very healthy note. <laughs> Let me use that word. We left it at a very healthy note where we, we were discussing about how the challenges of the body change especially when 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 ladies give birth there's that body change that for many and 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 it's true because for many men they tend to change their perspective and you know they want to go out there and look for someone else with what they used to see uh but there's one point that pastor made uh, and that's why i would like us to, to start our discussion <laughs> a very important i had i had never thought of it until until it was mentioned i had never thought of it and he said that if you invest in affirming your wife now that she's given birth and the body has changed and all of a sudden there 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 there, there are changes that you know even her she can't understand he he said that you need to invest in affirming in her because your time is coming <laughs> as the <a> man <laughs> And but when when I actually thought about it, I, I, I it's actually true. Most men in their fifties, sixties, there, and you look at the at the at the, at the wife, and you're like, hey, no, yeah. So those those things that come with body change, they can really affect the marriage, and they can take off from the one thing. Probably just to recap, how can these things affect? The marriage, especially when approached from the wrong perspective. I don't know. Well, should we start with uh, James? Should we start with you? <laughs> how can these things affect and how can we like cover our spouses? Uh, 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 especially because all of us here have, uh, have children and have experienced those changes. Yeah, and probably you can tell us how you handled yours. <laughs> um, thank you for having us both again. Um... Uh, I agree with what Pastor said. Uh, we gotta make sure we affirm our spouses because that's very important. Um, one way, and me the way I look at it, I know there's body changes which happen, but the way I see it and the way I look at it, I look at the, my spouse, my wife, who gave birth to our children. So it's a change which is a, is an acceptable change. Um, and you gotta go through it together, uh, because there's some couples you see out there. Uh, even myself, I, I have to say, even myself included. I remember, like when her changes started, you, you start finding yourself you are changing as well. You know, <laughs> there's those. It's just you realize what's going on here. Um, but 
you know, but once they, you see they are changing, for, for me, they change from being the woman to the wife. They change from being that girl you married to a woman at all, you know. So it's that process. Um, and in, in our situation, I would say it's just a matter of understanding and being in the journey together. Because being in the journey together, you know, it means you're not leaving her behind. You know, if, if, you, if you see there's an issue where she feels like, oh, well, my clothes are not fitting me, the ones which I used to, well, you don't, just don't say, you know, you, well, that's your problem. You just <laughs> take her along, take her shopping. Thank you. You know what I mean? Yeah, and yes. when you take her shopping, she feels we are straight away because yes. she knows, wow, well, yes. okay, he's accepting me for who I am, you know? And just those little things of, we are farming like that situation of shopping. You know, make sure, make sure you give. She's getting the right things which are fitting her and what she likes. It just you never hear anything about it. You know, but on the flip side, when you start changing, something happens as well. Mm. Because with women, they know. I think there's that issue of thinking. Well, hang on. I want to grow old with this man. I don't think I want him to be the way he is. So all of a sudden, she'll forget herself because you've reaffirmed her and she will start telling you, now you need to take care of yourself. And that's why now you start realizing, okay, this journey now is not for her alone and me alone, it's for us together. Wow. Yes, Maybe I yes. can just say that um, for us, um, for both, both the children, uh, my husband has always helped when, when we you know, when we've had our children, we've stayed home. I've stayed home for like the first two and a half months or so. And whenever I'm ready to come back to church, he'll always take me shopping. I'll always be like, I, my clothes don't fit me. And I feel like I need something, something new. So we'd go shopping and he'll be patient. You know, he's not the shopping kind of guy. If I want to go shopping, I'd rather even go on my own because... <laughs> But in this instance, he'll take me shopping and he'll wait and I'll ask for his opinion and he'll, he'll give me the time because he knows how important it is for me to get that, my self-esteem up because having a baby is not a small thing. And when you get the support of your husband, it's so important. I can say for me, he has never ever made me feel, oh, this is, how do I look? You know, because for me, I was a small, I would think I was a size 10. <laughs> I was a small young lady when I got married and obviously had the first baby get big and he was competing with me because I used to say to him, hey, who is, you know, <laughs> I used to say, <laughs> I used to say, ah, what's going on? I'm putting on, you're putting on. <laughs> contentment. Let me tell you, it's you called contentment. When we had our first child, we had gone on a diet. Now I'm, yeah, had gone on a I'm diet going before. down, but she's not going down. So we are like, what's going on here? You know, <laughs> before we found out. And then we found out I was so pregnant. Was pregnant. I'm like, oh, that's okay. why I was not losing weight. I think that's and when he was the diet stopped. Okay. So all of a sudden, now you switch back. Because now, okay, now let's go together with, uh, on this. You know? But, you know, I, I have to tell the husband, be careful how you answer some questions. Uh, you never know. <laughs> how you answer. I know. Yeah. How you answer. Uh, yeah. Those are the times when you wake up at night, someone is like, do I still look attractive? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and the problem is, you say, I can't see you because it's dark. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be careful. You have, you have to use your spiritual eye and say yeah. yes every time. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> You have to know the right answer. But after our second born, after when I was home on maternity, my husband now went on a health journey. So now I was on maternity and I was like that. I was big, obviously. It takes a while to lose the, the baby weight. And now he went on a health journey. And I had to also switch because I, I'm the woman in the home. I have to switch everything so that it suits all of us. It was so good because he was losing weight. I started losing myself. So it's always good to just help each other, you know. Yeah. And uh, as you help each other, you're helping yourself. Because I, when I was trying to help him on his journey, I found that now I was getting back to myself quicker. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Uh, can I add on that? <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think being a bit older, we've, we've had experience, obviously, like everybody here. And the thing is, it's very, very important to 
to notice the changes that happen because of certain biological changes that happen. It's, it's not easy. When a woman carries a child, there are the hormonal changes within her body. And so these hormonal changes, they can cause upheaval within a body's within a woman's body, her emotions, her feelings. And so it's a journey. So for me, I would I wish for the couples who have not as yet conceived and started on the journey towards having children to be on the same page. It's very important that as a lady is going for her appointments or even if the man is not able, the husband is not able to accompany the wife to the uh, midwife appointments, the hospital appointments, it's very important for the wife to come and feedback and, and let the husband know what, what, what was said and what to expect at different stages of the pregnancy, after you have the baby, what's going to happen, when you are breastfeeding or not breastfeeding, what's going to happen, when you stop breastfeeding, what's going to happen, because all these changes, it's very, very important. And we live in an age not like when I was pregnant. My first child, I carried him in the year of 1992. We depended on one book. We had one book. Now, last year, my niece had a had a baby and she kept she keeps telling me well they say they say and i keep getting upset i say i also know because i have experience who are they and where are they it's because they have apps they have books so you have to research you have to be on the same page you have to understand when when i got married this was not my size so my husband always says it's the effects of wear and tear well it's okay however i remember specifically after i stopped breastfeeding my children i lost all my hair and you know, and I do have quite naturally long, thick hair, as you can see, uh, you know, so I lost it. And I lost it because of the hormonal changes that were going on within my system. And it was very upsetting, but he supported me through it. So it's a journey and you need to journey together and to understand it starts at the beginning. There's no pressure. Let's appreciate each other. Let's encourage each other. Let's keep talking. Let's, let's journey together, you know? Let's journey together. Even if you have to challenge when somebody is maybe getting a little bit big, be careful the words that you're going to use it. Be careful what you're going to say. Don't mishandle your spouse. Don't be rough with your words. Be, be gentle, you know. Come in with a plan, you know. Like Susan has just said, that James went, went on a health journey and she automatically switched and they went on the health journey because she was supporting him. She was the one who was prepping the meals and getting everything ready. So she jumped on the bandwagon and they journeyed together and we have seen the results. So it's very important that we remain on the same page, understand what is going on, educate yourself, walk together and journey together. Wow. Hey. <laughs> yeah, I, I think, I think is, that's very, very important. But also what I also want to Lily and courage is an honest an honest communication honest communication that uh, i can be sincere enough to say the truth and not be judged because most of the times the thing that we are going through sometimes and that's why you find there are other people who know our secret more than our spouses because when i come to speak about my issue you are coming preaching to me rather than hearing me and uh, because of it, and let me say this because you might be talking about one challenge about getting children, but once you start going to the age of 40 and 50, you find there's other challenges. And those challenges you need to handle them in a better way. So, what I really want to encourage is that uh, when you are living and when you have a power, you're going to live, uh, you're going to have a multiple, uh, what can I say, multiple, multiple, multiple seasons. And each and every one of those seasons, you need your spouse to walk with you. And those spouse, those, those seasons, they will demand deep, something different from your spouse. Because you never have intimacy until you are honest. And honest is that I can hear my emotions and be sincere enough that I'm telling you and you are understanding if I think you're not going through it. Because you are the person who is so close to you, so you need to understand. And think of the kind of times where we even our spouses fail to hear, you know, fail to hear us, is because when they are expressing their emotions and what they are going through, we are ready to preach to them, we are ready to criticize them, we are ready to compare them, instead of just sitting and listening to them. 
yes, we might go some kind of way in there, but you need it because if I am going to walk with you, I think what you're going to do through that, but I have you, I have your back. And this is like now my wife was to talk about when I told my wife, I saw a very beautiful girl of which she can still be there today. But I think she but on the other hand, there come a season where I'm going to a challenge. Besides our having a sick, a beautiful baby, I think somebody who is understanding. I think somebody who is embracing a that season. And those are some of the things that we really need to take care of. Because if you're not, you know, if all of you right now here, you know, just artists, and when you start hitting 40s, 50s, and especially, uh, you know, uh, even where I was coming from, even as a man, there are some things like what each of you can say, there are some things I used to do that we no longer do them anymore. And those, those are different things. Those are different things, but especially in a certain age. So, what we really need to know is that uh, we need one another. We need to walk with, with one another. We need to encourage one another. We need to go whatever season we go through, you have my back. That's really, 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 really important. Yeah. Very, very important. Wow. Wow. Yes. Yeah, I'm thinking about how our journey started, you know, of the uh, change. Uh, because I think our life was completely different from all of you. Yes. Yeah. And as, uh, when we got married, I remember the first few years we were invited and was very ready to expect our passport. But it never happened. And you can imagine, I remember that day uh, my wife had already given us after the season, like nine months, we went to the maternity, uh, 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 to work. And she was admitted for the night. So I went to visit her the following day, carrying a pack of very, very big lunch by my sick mother. My mother had a terminal disease. That time, through all that season, she was very sick. She had breast cancer. But she was very afraid that she knew she would die at some point. And so she was looking forward to her as far as I was concerned. So on that day, I remember I went to visit my wife and I could not find her where I left her, so I thought, oh, that she, she delivered it. She is somewhere sitting the child. And looking at the faces of the mothers I left her with, they were looking at me very suspiciously in a very suspicious way, and I knew something was wrong. Anyway, I was back in Africa then. It took me a long time, like 30 minutes, to look for her and know where they had put her. And I found her soft in blood. All her clothes were like, you know, the, 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 the war, um, girls that expect her to put her on when they are getting ready. She was still in her own and it was full of patches of her. And I found her, let me you know, and I realized all of a sudden that that war was for. The mothers who had lost their children. Oh, right, I really need to start. I need to do something about the child. I need to be strong for my wife. So, what I did is um, I found her um, lying in her bed and she could not really lift her head. And I asked her, How are you? The first questions she asked me was, How is our baby? Which was still not you know, back in her senses out of the medication and stuff. They had cut her trying to save the baby. So I, I told her, you know what? God has given us another opportunity to serve him without a baby. And she understood for some reason. And then from there we, we buried our pastor. I remember paying for her burial. So and you can imagine now coming out of that was a little bit different for us. My mother was very afraid. She that that day when I went back home, she was afraid to receive the news. She was ready to receive the news. She asked me how are they? Then I brought the news and my dad told me that she cried the whole night and bled the whole night. She had a big wound uh, uh, to cut the long story short, we started on a very low note. But it took a lot of courage. 
not forgetting the things we have promised each other through our function, walking together out of this world like a miracle. It wasn't easy. Since my mother could not be able to do much, so I did all the work. You know the changes that come on a woman's body when she was expecting a baby. So there's a lot of milk in the breast, and also but that had to be expressed as well. We didn't have a, a fridge, so the medication that we had, we didn't hide the medication to the neighbor in the neighbor's fridge. So it was a long, it's a long story, but it took me a lot of courage to be able to continually affirm my wife and remember, I still love you. Remember, I'm with you even in this. And after a few months, again, after like a year or so, because we got so scared, we got so scared even of trying again. But we tried again and we started to start again for a second time. And that day, I remember I went to visit my wife in the hospital, and it was a lot of evacuation now because it was a miscarriage, and, uh, and uh, she was in pain. Deep pain and she was crying very hard. I said, You know what? I still love you. Don't worry. I know we've lost it again, but I still love you. Those are the words I told her. That was good again. So it takes a uh, that, 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 that took a lot of courage from, you know, I, I believe God helped me in that particular season to be able to still continually affirm to her that I still love you, even out of whatever has happened. Don't worry. We are still together. And like most men, you know, there are men who will turn to their wives and tell them you will never get back from them. Or you will never, how comes you will not let them live? And so it is for the power of a woman to, to deliver a child. So our story is different from most guys. <laughs> it's been a, a long story of tears and sorrow, and, but that brought me. That even now, as we talk about past concerns, it's only as capturing as a camera. Oh, you know, can you imagine? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I need a camera. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> that's the camera that I'm looking at right now. I'm so sorry. Yeah, who came like seven years later after the struggle? And we really can't go. Yeah. Wow. Well, that brings good things. <laughs> we thank God for the grace. Yeah, we give Him the glory. Uh, I, when you, I think when you add uh, from a different angle about the changes that we all we have to go through, we can't explain, uh, we can't, we have to go through them. Uh, I can speak on the side of the ladies. I think for me, I have learned to love myself. Ah, yes. I, I do love myself. I, I can spend time, I can spend several enough minutes in my mirror, making sure that I'm, I'm well, I'm well. I don't want to... I'm a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. She does that for me. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, so, ladies who are watching us, Take care of yourself, love yourself, yeah. make sure you're, you're very presentable, yeah. you eat well, yeah. you dress well, yeah. and take care of yourself. I can yes. say that Naomi is one woman, even when you visit her at 10 a.m., when you walk into her house, she's at home. She has makeup on. Yeah. 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 She may not maybe be wearing lipstick, but her eyebrows are done. You know, that's not microblading. Those are eyebrows that you should have do that. You know? I walk in and say, Naomi, you have your face made up when you're in your house. <laughs> but, I, but, but I think that's very, very important because if I was wrong to you because of a certain woman, thank God that I didn't just wear makeup. <laughs> <laughs> I wear a little bit of makeup for my shots, for my cameras. <laughs> but that's where I was going because that's what I thought I was getting. And when somebody comes to the house and then you change and then you change like, no, we should not because I think I have created that I this is one of the qualities that I love people. So when I come in the house, it's something I find in our relationship to not change. Yeah, so so but but that's a great thing. Yeah, yeah. Wow.
Yeah, Mills, I see you're ready to answer. No, 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 that's what I was saying. You told me a story. Uh, I think the thing we are going to see, we will be a permission from him. Um, it's built to a relationship with the kingdom. And I think the Bible, so we can see the journey, how it started, is not how it is. Yes. You know, he doesn't know what happens in God because he knows the story. So you've got to change the story along the way, son. Yes. And there's a reason for it. Yes. So in their story, we have a mission from James. We can see now the world is still together. Yeah. I mean, there's a couple of other people that say, okay, you know what? People you know that they're wrong. Yeah. But in this case, what does it happen? We have to do something. Yeah. 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 You know, so we, we just want to keep together. We just want to keep working together I think, yeah. with each other. That's the main thing. Uh, and most important, I think I have to say, is we be a real fan. No matter the situation, right. especially at home, be a fan. Because they are the bigger sense. Yeah. They are the stronger. So we've got to be there. No matter how you feel, take your feelings out of the equation and be a fan. Because now it's about the other person. That's amazing. Yeah. And also, it's good to know that it's a command that loves the life. Okay, we are supposed to love them. And they're supposed to honor us. According to the Bible now. And it's a thought that we raise us the children. Mm-hmm. Our mother, sometimes you hear the mother say, You wait until your father. It's supposed to be that way. The father is the one who raises the children. The mother comes, or the wife comes as a helper. And if somebody is a helper, if you call me to help, you don't expect me to work more than you. You know, so I'm the one who's supposed to do more. I'm supposed to love her, I'm supposed to affirm her. I'm supposed to show my children that I love them. I am because one of the problems we are having with families these days, I have a collective spoke with the Tyra. And one of the problems we, we've always spoken about, one of the problems we are having right now these days is that fathers don't live as role models. We are supposed to live as examples to our sons. Show our sons that women like our wives needs to be honored girls need to be honored i was listening to a preacher who was saying that sometimes it's good even around the dining table go and pull that dining you know chair and, and the seat and there that your wife sits first don't just go and sit first come on give her the privilege of sitting first show you a young man and your young girl as well your young girls as well that is respect that comes from the father so we Headship is not just a position. It is a ministry that we have been given as others. We are supposed to leave it to the last minute. To the last minute. We are supposed to show our children that this is how our wives are treated. And we know if we leave it, they will leave it as well. We are raising generation. We are not just raising children. We are, we are, raising, we are, we are raising them to become like God. We are raising them to become like we and we have that is that is why we even take them to church. Yes. That is why we come to church when the pastor is preaching the word, he is offering a big chunk, like a big chunk of meat to us. So that's when we receive it and we get back to the house. We as fathers, we are the ones who are supposed to cut it in different in small pieces and give it to children, and as they receive it, they can be able to digest it at their level. Yeah. But if we leave them at home. They will leave their children at home. Yeah. And also, I can add something. Yeah. I remember um, the other thing that the men, um, what is important, so much is empathy. You know, the woman is the one who is given the privilege of bearing children, bringing them forth. But it's not an easy job. But when your husband is empathetic, it's so important because. It makes you feel like you can do it over and over and over again. I remember I think it was after our first child we were in hospital. Sorry, it's a bit embarrassing. But we are keeping it real. <laughs> and after after I gave birth, I had a, a long neighbor and then I gave birth. And even after the long neighbor, I still ended up having surgery. And I remember my husband was so I I, I caught him. I saw you, I saw tears, and I said, why, why, are you, why are you, what's wrong? He said, I'm so sorry you have to go through all that, I'm so sorry. But to me, I was thinking, but for me, it's a privilege, look at this baby, I mean, for me, it's, 
this is bringing forth life. But for him, he was thinking, the things you have to go through, because he was there the whole time. He was like, wow, what you've gone through? And then I'm like, no, it's okay. I mean, if I was asked to do it again, just for that baby, I would do it again. You know, that's how it is with women. Once you give back, it's just worth it. But the fact he was empathetic, I thought to myself, wow, he really cares. And we're in this together. Mm. And, and let me say this because when you empathize with somebody, you feel to be involved. And it is very, very crucial. I think I, I remember uh, there was a time I was meeting here and I saw, I, I spoke about it as being, uh, you know, empathetic. And you could see this is not all the time sometimes when you see somebody. I think I was just giving the scripture and I said, see, uh, see the journey of this point. Every time you see, every time you see Jesus in you know, even the story is simple. And this time, Jesus was standing and he was feeling like, you know, a hey, father, can I go, you know? He, he empathizes with us. He empathizes with us. That's why you feel, especially when people are in danger, talk about check that mission for the veteran, and you find when they're in the fire. He, because he is one of us, the Bible says, we don't have a high priest who cannot be put his empathize. And empathize, and when you find that uh, in that situation, you feel to be involved. And we need to ask ourselves when our, our spouses are going through a crisis, instead of being a spectator and criticizing, well, how can I get there? Even if I cannot carry the pain, but I, it's it, you know, how, how can I be? Probably it's the heart, probably it's the, my involvement, whatever it is. We need to be so, we need to be so, and it helps a lot, and especially when you speak about ladies, because ladies carry the words that we speak to them in a lot of ways. We, des we can destroy the ladies and we can build them up by the work of who we need to speak to them. And the place where they are supposed to get comfortable is the place they are getting their pain. I think that is very, very important. Very, very important, yes. Yeah. Um, you know, my children I was talking, I was thinking about when we, we lost our first um, pregnancy. And uh, it was through the words that I had spoken to the early, giving her first words at that time. I could not forget that, and I was remembering them all with the time. I remember I told her at some point, even if you don't get children, when you get married, I will still love you as I am right now. And as you are saying, last time it's good to always, I personally think it's always good to um, affirm them. Don't forget to affirm them. But sometimes I tend to think women are most common. James he said we are the strongest and they are the weakest. But I think sometimes they are stronger in some areas. Like if it were not for Naomi's strength, I would have remained just me and her. I had given up along the way. I thought, so how can we just, because of the fear, the natural fear that comes when you lose the first time, you lose the second time. But it is her who encouraged me to, we must have a generation. There must be something that the devil is fighting here. And we must have a child. And we got our first born son after seven years. Seven years? After seven years. And you know, we felt like, we still felt, we raised him so free. We thought we would lose him along the way. We never knew he would survive because we were used to losing. Then we got another son after seven years, after, after five years. And we almost lost him. He got a bad infection. And it's now he again was admitted with me for in the ICU for 11 days. I never knew it was ICU until the last day. <laughs> because I had never been there again. So when they were discharging us, I told them, now you are getting out of ICU. I didn't know it was that critical, but we almost lost him. The outcomes of a bad infection. So she was a strong one during that period of time. So we. So she also encouraged me. So it's a matter of walking through each other together and encouraging one another. Walking through it. So changes are for both of us. So I could be weak when she's strong, but she's strong, she's weak again, I'm strong. 
Yeah, so it's a two-way thing, it's not a one-way thing. So we are aiming to kind of change this government to both of us. Yeah.